Hybrid Summit. I hope all of you had an amazing lunch just now. Now, I am very, very, it is my absolute pleasure, excuse me, to introduce our next speaker, Larry Sanger, co-founder of Wikipedia and CIO of Everypedia, presenting to us a keynote speech on building a more accessible world today. Please give it up for Larry Sanger. Hello, folks. Hope you had a good lunch. So um, what I'm going to be talking about today is decentralization, why, decentralization uh, why decentralize and how to decentralize. Um, I don't know if I'm going to be able to see you uh, uh, very well, but hands up all those who have used Wikipedia or who regularly use Wikipedia. Of course, pretty much everybody. All right. Now, raise your hand if you actively edit Wikipedia now. Let's see. How many? How, nobody? OK, that's very interesting. Why is that? Well, uh, a recent study revealed that more than 87% of people who use Wikipedia have never edited Wikipedia. And of course, the people who are continuing to edit Wikipedia is much, much smaller than even that. So more than 65% of the people in this survey said they believe that the limited number of Wikipedia contributors makes the site's information biased. You probably have an opinion about this. Wikipedia's editor base is small, at least for a project of its size, and that makes it decentralized, and that, in turn, makes it biased. Well, Wikipedia, despite being less centralized than many older systems, it still remains quite centralized, and it has a relatively small, idiosyncratic, community, some might even say a closed community. And this can be regarded as one of the main reasons for the flaws that it has. Of course, it's very useful, and I've never denied that. Wikipedia has, for example, lacked a, uh, an external rating system. So you can't rate Wikipedia articles. You can't go onto the site and give it a numerical rating. Why not? Wouldn't you like to be able to? Maybe they don't care about your opinion. You can't include articles from other sources on Wikipedia. You have to work with Wikipedians if you want to participate. And Wikipedia has failed to modernize its design. And they really can't do that using their consensus-based model. Um, and all of these problems all stem from their having a, a, a relatively centralized and closed community. That's not how it should be. This is one of the reasons that I have uh, distanced myself from my, my creation. My career has been about decentralizing knowledge, knowledge creation via uh, the internet. I have a PhD in philosophy, and my specialization was uh, theory of knowledge. And uh, I sometimes wonder what m my old professors must think about uh, Wikipedia and the, the fact that, that one of their students um, launched it. Um, I, I know some of them are, are actually em embarrassed by it. I think we can do better. I look at it as, as a missed opportunity. One of the values that uh, Wikipedia was founded on is putting knowledge back in the hands of the people. So we were, like the free open source software community, the, the philosophy behind it is the philosophy behind Wikipedia, we were an effort toward decentralization. Now, this is what 
we've been talking about so much in uh, blockchain conferences. Why is decentralization f worth fighting for, though? Uh, what's the point? Well, I think the main point is freedom. There is less opportunity for top-down control in a robustly decentralized system. There's less friction in our relationships and transactions, and there's more privacy. Um, at least there's more opportunity for privacy in a, a fully decentralized community. So the blockchain industry builds dApps, decentralized apps, right? Decentralization is one of the great advantages of blockchain, along with immutability and transparency and security, right? My view is that it, it's decentralization in particular that makes blockchain so revolutionary. The world is absolutely ruled today by increasingly centralized networks. Think of um, WeChat, think of Facebook, think of um, Apple and Microsoft. That's not how it used to be. So I joined Everpedia when the guys told me that they're moving to the blockchain, which would allow it to become a decentralized encyclopedia network. And that's something that I've wanted to develop for uh, several years. It would make that possible. All right, then. So how would you go about building a decentralized encyclopedia? I'd like to approach that question um, from another angle. I don't think there is a single DAP, correct me if I'm wrong, um, I don't think there is a single app that has fully reached its potential um, yet. They uh, simply aren't used by, by very many people yet, right? And I, I know quite a few of you are working on, on blockchain projects. And um, ask yourself, why is that? Why is that the case? Why not? Well, of course, there's various reasons. But one way of looking at it is that the dApps, beside, despite the name, aren't really decentralized. And this matters because the fact that blockchain hasn't reached very many people is one of the reasons we're in a bear market, right? We were expecting revolution by now, and it hasn't come. So decentralization and the rest of blockchain's benefits, as I was describing before, it act absolutely requires massive use. It has to be used or the benefits won't come. So if you make an awesome dApp with revolutionary promise, but most of the world continues to use some pre-existing centralized solution, then the revolution won't come and your ideas will be useless and worthless. Your tokens will be worthless. Many of us seem to have been assuming um, that if you build it, they will come. Now, this isn't the case. They certainly won't come until the tech is actually usable. The problem, right, is that dApps have been very difficult for non-technical people to use. That's the elephant in the room. And people have been talking about this in the last year, I've noticed, at different conferences. But not that many people seem to be doing anything about it. So let me give you some free advice. I want you to, if you will, work harder on UX, user experience. The main source of the problem is overfocus on the blockchain tech and underfocus on usability, design, and UX. Possibly the reason for this is that back end developers who are very smart and pioneering difficult technology 
a lot of them aren't very good at front-end tech, and maybe some of them undervalue front-end tech. Well, I, need, we, I think we need to change that. Uh, how, how many of you are, are familiar with open source software and actually use some of it in your daily lives? Can I have a show of hands? Okay, some. That's good. You, you, should, you should try it. Uh, try Linux. Open source software has similar issues, right? For a long time, it was by and for developers. And only in the last decade or so have they finally figured out that usability is really the key to pe getting people to use open source software. As a result, uh, Firefox and um, Ubuntu and um, Mint, the last two are, are flavors of Linux, and some other free software is actually looking good. It's actually usable, and I, again, strongly recommend it. Those are small success stories, and they have a lot more to do um, as far as usability is concerned. We in the blockchain space, we have a similar problem. And I think we can take a leaf from projects like Ubuntu and, um, and do better. So how do we reach mass market potential with decentralized applications. That's going to be the topic for the rest of the speech here. Well, first of all, um, I want to talk about uh, how Everpedia is doing it. So Everpedia is a blockchain encyclopedia that uh, I'm, I am the CIO of. Um, here is the home page of the fully redesigned Everpedia which we will be launching next month. Um, on it, blockchain isn't mentioned, and uh, there will be nothing signaling to the end user that the project isn't for them. That's really important. There's nothing to indicate that the project is somehow intended for geeks and developers. We want to convey that Everpedia is for everyone. And it will be, as I'll explain. So this is how you reach mass market potential with dApps, in my opinion. Stop trying to sell people on why they should be using your uh, application by saying, oh, it's the blockchain, right? If we're built on the blockchain, but that, that, that isn't really a huge selling point for most people. No, you need to build an app that people will use because it's genuinely better and easier to use than existing apps. That the fact that it's a dApp instead of an app just doesn't matter to most people. They don't care. Everpedia was um, founded in um, 2015 by a couple of the guys sitting here, Sam and Teddy. Um, and, and a, a few others, um, by redesigning the wiki encyclopedia from the ground up to be both inviting and easy to edit, both of which I thought were very important. So I uh, actually started advising them at about that time. Here you can see the difference between the original, more nicely designed, uh, 2015 Everpedia and the old-fashioned Wikipedia, but we're redesigning it again in 2019. So it's not all about design and usability, though, right? Um, so I don't want to, I don't want to entirely turn off the attendees of a blockchain conference by saying blockchain doesn't matter. Obviously, it matters a lot, and it is, it is one of the selling points for a lot of your projects. Sure, um, in our case, um, blockchain has some great ways to get people involved and to keep them involved. So, for example, users are rewarded with our token, the IQ token, um, for contributing. 
and those tokens then give them the right to vote for, um, on important governance issues that govern the whole network. And another big advantage that stems from uh, the, the blockchain is we're putting human knowledge um, in a, a decentralized network that makes it much harder to censor. You'd actually have to shut down I, uh, the uh, IPFS and all the block producers all around the world if you actually wanted to censor um, Everpedia, the Everpedia network. That just isn't going to happen. So in short, in short, tokenization gives users an ownership stake. Um, it empowers the individual, and that is a huge selling point, and absolutely. So I'm not saying don't give that message. Definitely do give that message, but don't stop there. You have to, you have to use every way that you can to get people into your project so that it really does become genuinely decentralized. Here's another thing that we've done to reach mass market uh, ad adoption and, and fully decentralize Everpedia. We did an airdrop to um, EOS holders in 2018 that got IQ tokens in the hands of uh, over 150,000 people, 51% of, of our circulating tokens. The aim here then is to create a community that has an ownership stake from the beginning. So we're really serious about being decentralized. If you send signals that you want to stay in control, people are going to be turned off. In April, so coming up soon, we plan to launch our second generation user interface, rebuilt from the ground up. This will make it extremely easy to make a new account. Right? Um, it will be, and that's one of the big problems with a lot of dApps, right? Simply just making an account requires that, you, that they purchase a token or something. That isn't right. It can't be that hard, right? Um, it will also be about as easy to edit as a Medium or a WordPress article, easier than ever, easier than it was on our site, and certainly a lot easier than Wikipedia. And then, how does this help with decentralization? Well, here's how. We are going to make our, our software fully open source. Now, uh, our blockchain, the blockchain side of our software, is already op open source. It's already available on GitHub. But when it's ready, um, which it will be soon, we will be making our front-end software open source as well. And this will be a major new option for people who are installing wikis. I fully expect that wiki software will become a new standard in collaborative work. Our software will be. Um, and this, this will, I hope, um, attract developers to our project. And maybe more importantly, it will allow people who want to install their own version of our software um, they will be able to do that and start their own communities that directly feed into the Everpedia network. We're really serious about this decentralization stuff. So we aim to set a new precedent in the coming year by creating a, a DAP that stretches beyond the usual highly technical blockchain space right, and reaches true mass market potential. We want to bridge the gap between the very real benefits of blockchain technology that we're all convinced of and the forgotten, perhaps, needs of the average internet user. You've got to start thinking about those people. Start thinking about grandma. So. Um, let me give you a little rundown of our news um, in, by way of conclusion. There are more dApps right now that are currently being built uh, around the IQ network, some of them by, by uh, our um, well, teams that are uh, associated with us. 
Um, we are committed to supporting decentralized social media projects on the IQ blockchain. This is something that I've been writing about recently on my blog, and I, I'm going to be writing and speaking more about it in the coming weeks. Um, and uh, just to give you an example of uh, another thing that, that we're doing, um, we have a growing group of uh, developers, uh, an independent group of developers, who is developing something called Decentral Bank, um, which will provide software to the world's central banks so they can realize, uh, they can release their own tokens. So that's also another potential way where we can decentralize the central banks. It'd be pretty awesome, I think. So um, if you want to uh, check us out, there are uh, our coordinates. Um, you can connect with me um, via Telegram. I use that quite a bit. Um, I, I've, I've uh, unsubscribed, uh, deleted a lot of my social media accounts, but not Twitter. Um, so I'm still hanging out there. And that is all I have for this afternoon. And uh, I hope you will visit the site. Thank you very much.